Hi, this is Rich Carlson. Welcome to another episode of The Art of Rope Work here at Canyons and Crags. Today we're going to take a look at how mechanical advantage and friction can affect the load we put on our anchors. So grab your gear and a rope and follow along. The load to be lifted in this demonstration is 250 pounds. While lifting up on the rope using a 5 to 1 mechanical advantage, the load on the anchor was 190 pounds. While pulling down on the rope using a 4 to 1 mechanical advantage with a change of direction, the load on the anchor was 350 pounds. Let's take a look at how mechanical advantage plays a role in the load on the anchor. Obviously when I am lifting the load by simply pulling up on the rope, without any mechanical advantage, 100% of the load is on me. There is no portion of the load being held by an anchor. I will explain why I listed the fractions in a few minutes. It is common practice when hauling to add a component called a PCD, short for Progress Capture Device, represented here by the yellow prusik connected to the anchor. The PCD allows me to haul, then let the anchor take the load while I rest. In this example, while I am hauling, 100% of the load is on me and no portion of the load is on the anchor. While I am resting, 100% of the load is on the anchor and no portion of the load is on me. Redirecting the rope through a pulley at the anchor will allow me to pull down instead of up. Because the pulley in this example is stationary and not moving, it is providing a change of direction only, abbreviated as COD. Look what happens to the load now. While I am hauling, 100% of the load will be on me and the anchor will need to hold 200% of the load. It is important to note that the numbers I am quoting refer to theoretical mechanical advantage only. They do not address friction. For the purpose of this discussion, and easy math for me, let's assume the load weighs 100 pounds. There are two strands of rope, one on each side of the pulley, that are each holding 100 pounds. There is a 100 pound static weight hanging on the left side of the pulley and I must generate 100 pounds of force on the right side of the pulley to hold the load. The sum of the tension on the two ropes is 200 pounds, so 200% of the load is on the anchor. But those are only theoretical numbers. I need to generate 100 pounds of force just to hold the load. To move the load, I need to generate more than 100 pounds of force. If 101 pounds of force is enough to move the load, there will be 201 pounds of load on the anchor. But that would assume I have a perfect frictionless pulley. In actual practice, I must generate enough force to lift the 100 pound load plus overcome the friction created by the pulley. Now let's take a look at a 2 to 1 mechanical advantage system, which is created by fixing one end of the rope to the anchor, then redirecting the rope through a moving pulley that is connected to the load. While I am lifting, the load is shared between the two tension ropes, with 50% on the anchor and 50% on me. A 2 to 1 mechanical advantage is kind on the anchor and kind on me. Just as in the first example, the use of a progress capture device with a 2 to 1 will allow me to rest. While I am resting, my 50% of the load is also being held by the anchor. The anchor is now holding its own 50% plus my 50%, so it's holding 100% of the load. If I choose to redirect the rope through a stationary pulley on the anchor so I can pull down instead of up, there will be three tension ropes each with 50% of the load on it. Previously I was pulling up on the load, in essence helping the anchor hold the load. Now I am pulling down on the anchor, adding my pulling force to the weight of the load for a total of 150%. Now let's talk about those fractions. A simple way to figure out the theoretical load on the anchor is to use the mechanical advantage as the denominator in a fraction. When the haulers are lifting up on the rope, the numerator in the fraction will be the denominator minus 1. 
when the haulers are resting and the progress capture device takes all of the load onto the anchor, the numerator in the fraction will be the same as the denominator. When the haulers redirect the rope through a stationary pulley on the anchor and pull down instead of up, the numerator in the fraction will be the denominator plus one. So, if your mechanical advantage is two to one, use two as the denominator. While lifting up on the rope, the load on the anchor will be one half. While resting, the load on the anchor will be two halves. Using a change of direction and pulling down on the rope, the load on the anchor will be three halves. If your mechanical advantage is five to one, use five as the denominator. While lifting up on the rope, the load on the anchor will be four fifths. While resting, the load on the anchor will be five fifths. Using a change of direction and pulling down on the rope, the load on the anchor will be six fifths, and so on. Keep in mind, these numbers refer to theoretical mechanical advantage and do not account for friction. Now let's add friction to the mix. I used a 10 pound weight for this demonstration. If I was pulling rope through a perfect frictionless pulley, the load on the anchor would be just over 20 pounds. If 11 pounds of force on my side was enough to lift the load, it would be 21 pounds. The closest thing I have to a perfect pulley is this one made by Rock Exotica. It is rated at 92% efficient. When pulling down on the rope, there was 24 pounds on the anchor. A carabiner is not an efficient pulley. When pulling down on the rope, there was 34 pounds on the anchor because I needed to pull hard enough to lift the load plus overcome a greater amount of friction compared to the real pulley. A munter hitch will create a tremendous amount of friction, so it obviously wouldn't make any sense to use one in a hauling system. While I was pulling down on the rope, there was 140 pounds on the anchor. However, while lowering, the more friction the better. In my demonstration, the load on the anchor was only 13 pounds while I was lowering. The friction created by the munter hitch at the anchor held a significant portion of the load, so I didn't need to use as much force on my side. Now back to where I started. 250 pound load. Lifting up with a five to one mechanical advantage, the load on the anchor should have been four fifths or 200 pounds, but it was actually 190 pounds. Friction played a role in the difference. Redirecting to pull down with a 4 to 1 mechanical advantage, the load on the anchor should have been 5 fourths or 312.5 pounds, but it was actually 350 pounds. Again, friction played a role in the difference. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you think it will help others, share it on your favorite social media. Be sure to visit my website at canyonsandcrags.com for online training, hands-on workshops, and for some great gear. Thanks for watching.